Hi folks, I hope everyone is well and you had a good weekend. Today I'm going to explain what on earth is going on. You might wonder why I'm in an echoey pink room. We've had a bit of a change of plan, change of heart. This week we're making up for the fact that we're still waiting on some materials for the workshop and we've decided to decorate three rooms and we've got three days, two days to do it. Anyway, let me give you a walk around what's going on and then we can head down the, to the workshop site and I can tell you exactly what the plan is there. Room one is this room, it's the front of the house. It's gonna be Eden's new bedroom. Jo's moving out of here and will take my old workshop space for her studio. I've just finished painting all of the trim in here. So I've used the Graco handheld airless sprayer for that. All of that trim's done now and hopefully in an hour or so it'll be perfectly dry enough. I did it this morning, so it's had a few hours, dry enough to mask off, and then I'm gonna start on the ceilings. Had no, no intentions to redecorate the whole rooms, but we ordered new carpets and we thought, do you know what, we've gotta take the opportunity to get it done properly. Anyway, that's enough of this room, let me head into the next one. Okay, we're up here on the top floor, which is the loft conversion. Everything has been just jammed into my office and onto the landing here, but this, room here which was once my photography space i had a bit of a studio set up in here and um, it is now our guest bedroom hence why there's a bed in there and because of that we wanted to change up our idea of having this exposed wood floor we just painted it it's not really we never sanded it or anything we just chucked some paint down on it so i could use it for some lifestyle shoots we've got to go same carpet all the way up through the house now so i've fit some skirting boards in there's a whole load of just quick fixes some snagging and Joe's gonna come up later and paint this stone wall. This stone wall got a bit of a hammering when it was raining and I was not on top of things on the roof. Where the lead flashing was on the chimney, it just got a bit damp. So it's all dry now and hopefully a bit of a matte emulsion on there. It's just on the white stonework. We've, it was clay paint originally. This is that earthborn clay paint, so it's nice and breathable. We might have some of that down there. If we don't, doesn't matter. Just some white um, super matte uh, Dulux always blends in and it's pretty breathable anyway. Anyway, that's it for this one. Since I finished this room, although we haven't done the proper lighting, I did put some LED down lighters or, or a strip on that end rafter, it looks quite cool. But we'll have a big reveal up here once that's done. These are the insulated loft hatches. Still need to trim out here, but everything up here will be just painted by hand. The Velux that we put in on this side of the roof Unfortunately, again, when we were doing the roof, there was some drips, or some drips, rain, flowing through the top because even after you've got the membrane on and the felt on, even if you put some flashings on, the sides are fine, obviously the bottom is fine. The top, unless you run something right up over the ridge, which I did in the end, water is able to kind of just work its way under. So that's what these drips are. They're now bone dry and we can get all that repainted. So that's Joe's project tonight. Let me show you the last bedroom and then we'll head down to the workshop. This is the fallout of moving three or four rooms out to carpet at the same time. Right, through into the next room. So this is the back bedroom, which is on the north side of the house. So we try to keep it fairly light, although face the side is she wants a dark navy wall with space stars on it. So we're gonna do that. She gets what she wants. Anyway, this room here, I've prepped up everything sprayed all of the woodwork terrible lighting in here but you can see all of the skirting's done i just sprayed it off i'm going to mask that and then move on to the ceiling and the walls again all this architrave managed to spray from the inside really nice finish on that all of this i'm going to go into in like a bit of a decorating vlog style video later this week but i'm still using that Graco for all the handheld stuff but i have upgraded to a bigger airless machine for walls and ceilings i don't really need to be doing it on this these small rooms but I'm trialing on these ready for the big studio repaint for Joe's um, new maker space, uh, which will be in a few weeks time. It's probably a bit of a luxury to move to that, especially for this size room. And of course I could have just rolled it, but I'm a real big fan of um, getting that really nice flat finish now with the sprayer. And like everything, the preparation is always like 80% of the task and then 20% of the doing. Well, actually when it comes to Ellis or, or any spraying, it's like 95% prep and masking, 5% spray time. And once you've nailed the technique, or and nailed it as much as you need to, um, 
it's just such a satisfying way to you know paint a room that said i've never done a ceiling or well, not a big one so we'll see how the new sprayer does but big reveal on that in the next video these are the carpets that will come out we'll find a use for them i think my brother's gonna have one of them and then the other one will go into the loft alexa turn off a bit too much alba for me right let's move through what else has been going on so we're walking through the porch. If you haven't been on Instagram lately, you'll not have a clue what's going on. So what happened is we've got a bit of a delay on some of the building materials for the workshop, simply just down to my lack of planning. And I knew it was gonna happen and I kind of intentionally left it because I thought there's a load of jobs I can get done in that week or two when I'm waiting. One of those jobs has been on the cards for ages, which is finishing what we're in now, which is the garage conversion. This is the utility area. Excuse the mess. The bathroom I built in there, this hallway that links the house through just is a place that always gets battered. I'm a real big fan of panelling, so that lower third, I've just done some shaker style panelling. It was all ready to paint until we decided we were going to do de decorating upstairs instead. So now I've got this to paint at three bedrooms. Pretty simple stuff, this is just um, 6mm MDF backer, 6mm top. I'm not gonna do the trim. I've done this a few times in the past and I'll run through that in the video I've filmed. Uh, so that's another job to get done this week. It was a bit of a pain. I've decided to use the same skirting but then I've trimmed up over the step. Still gotta finish the step. Same the other side. Then just working out how it's gonna look when you're coming across. Managed to get all of this boxed. Managed to finally get all that ugly stuff boxed in and then this shaker door that I made last year is ready to hang on all the heating controls in there. Right, I'll take a breath in a minute. Made up all these architraves, they're all fit on there. These doors are all gonna be restored, but I've got about 10 or 12 of them to do, and I wanna do them all in one hit, which means no one has a door on their bedroom for a while. But basically, once I've got this workshop space set up, or even the studio space, we can just blitz through all of them, set up a spray booth, basically spray everything and then hang it all. Um, until then I've got no door handle, but with the help of whatever's in my pocket, pencil, I can get through there. It's tiring enough doing this stuff, let alone talking through it all. Right, I'm not gonna show you anything lower than my knees because it's just an absolute mess in here. This is the garage conversion, the big room. There's a few, well, future-proofing, we made this into a self-contained annex. We're using it for our own businesses, so it was, what is now kind of a workshop space slash storeroom. Jo's gonna be taking over and having this as her creative maker space for running her business from. That's mainly sewing, crafty type stuff, but we're gonna run any of the clean crafts like leather work and all that sort of stuff in here as well. So purpose-built units, all that sort of stuff to come. As well as all the mess on the floor, I've also got nearly a ton of render sat here, which was meant to be the project this week. So while you might not have seen much going on on YouTube, believe me, this all go here. Now, let me explain why everything has changed. The main plan was to delay the workshop by only a week, maybe two weeks, whilst we wait for the cladding, because I knew that was gonna happen, whether I collected it or whether I ordered it and got it de delivered. But um, I wanted to get rendering done and some cabinets made up in there. Then it all got a bit chilly and because it dropped below freezing for the last week and a half there was no chance I was going to be able to render all this. So that was my main plan uh, and because I couldn't do that then we had to move inside. I still really want to get that done as soon as possible but it's just whatever comes first really. If, I'm, if the panelling shows up then I want to crack on with the workshop obviously. As you can see though I'm in a t-shirt today so it is not freezing anymore and it's perfectly uh, fine to crack on and get that rendering done. The issue is, because we want to see the bedrooms, because it's half term, because there's no home school and no structure to anything, we fancied taking on a project in the house to keep the kids busy and just to have a bit of focus. For that reason, we wanted to take on the bedrooms. Joe just went ahead and ordered the carpet. And by ordering the carpet, we thought, oh, we'll book in Steve, our fitter that's done stuff for us in the past. He had half a day free on Wednesday. It's now Monday, so if you've ever had carpets fitted before, you know that getting the skirting board painting done really early and uh, make sure it's completely cured is a priority. Therefore, hopefully, by doing it this morning, Monday morning, we're okay by Wednesday afternoon. Anyway, coming back to the workshop, which is the most important thing, of course. Next job is to finish off the 
beams. So I'm going to put a router over all the corners just to kind of give them a, a bit of a chamfered edge. And then we can get the roof on. When the roof arrives, they're insulated panels, just one hit wonder, straight up on the roof, instantly waterproof, instantly uh, insulated, and the underside of them is pre-finished. Therefore, all of this is going to be a bit drier. The concrete slab will start drying out again and then we can um, do any sanding and things like that then the wall panels can go in they're identical the wall panels are just a flat version they're going to be overclad in timber i'll explain all this but basically as soon as that arctic shows up on friday with big seven meter long cut um, panels i need to then cut them to length and then we'll be fitting them onto the outside of the beams i think i've explained it all in the design episode but all of the beams will then be on the inside of that wall plant uh, wall paneling so that's all to come. There's about 85 square meters of 100 mil insulated wall panels to come. So it's a great big old lorry and it's like a 400 quid delivery charge, but it means I can basically wrap and roof a workshop in a day or two on my own. Insulated, cladded, watertight, airtight, ready to go. So. I think it's the right option. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure what's coming content wise. If it's not moving on to the workshop, it will be decorating and prepping and painting all those rooms upstairs. And if it's not that, then it might be paneling video, which I've started or filmed in the utility. If it's not that, then it might be the roofing of the shed last summer, which I've now finished editing and just need to do a couple of bits um, on that edit. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that gives you some sort of insight into the crazy madhouse that this is. Um, just rest assured that there's not going to be a shortage of content coming. It might just be a bit jumbled and varied, but that's all good. If you want to see more of what's going on behind the scenes, then do head over to Instagram because it's easy enough for me to share a story now and then than it is for me to uh, do a full blown edit. As soon as the workshop comes back into life, when the panelling arrives, then I wouldn't try my best to get back into that sort of three or four video a week um basis because it was really much easier for me to just it uh, i'm not gonna say it was easy but it was easier for me to keep on top of stuff when i know that i'm putting out content at the end of the day and um you're getting whatever happened in that day rather than me trying to kind of shoehorn it all in anyway thank you as always to everyone for their support remember if you want to order any of the isotunes headphones our code which is trc10 we'll put it all down in the description it's still valid for another two weeks or so so you can head across use that link even if that link doesn't work i know some people struggle with that in the past maybe off mobile device i'm not sure then however you get to the isotunes website you can still use that code works just fine hope you enjoyed the update thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time